Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can create a snowfall particle effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So for this effect, we're going to require a total of four video layers. The first layer is going to be our base video, which both of the snow effect layers will be showing on top of. Then on video track 2, we're going to have the first layer of snow, which will fill in the background only. And we can get started on adding that to our video track 2 by going to the effects library and then go to toolbox effects fusion composition. And we'll drop on the fusion composition template onto the timeline. I'm also going to expand it for the duration of the clip, however long we want to create the snowfall effect for. On video track 3, we're going to have a copy of the same clip from video track 1. So I'm going to copy this just with Control c Control v and drag it up to video track 3. Note that you do not need to copy the audio tracks, so feel free to delete that if you need. And then on video track 4, which we'll create later, we're going to have another layer of snow that will show all across the video, and these snowflakes will be larger, but these snowflakes will also show in front of the person's face. So by having a lot of snow fall behind the person, and only a few in front of the person as it gets closer to the camera, it will give you a more realistic look, because the amount of snow between the camera and the person's face is... Is nowhere near as much as the amount of snow between the camera and the background. So next let's go ahead and create the snow effect on video track 2. So go over to the fusion tab and in the clips section which you can open in the top left make sure you have video track 2 selected for that fusion composition. At the start you should see nothing but a media out note and to create this effect we're going to need a particle emitter. We're also going to need a particle renderer. Between the particle emitter and the particle vendor, I'm also going to add in a particle turbulence, which you can find in the right-click add tool menu. So the turbulence allows us to add in some randomness to the direction that the particles are going as the time progresses in the video, which will make it look a lot more like wind is having some impact on the snow. So next we can take the particle vendor and connect it to media out. Clicking on the particle emitter node and looking in the preview window for the media out, we should be able to see some particles already inside it. But we want these particles to spawn in a way where it covers the entire shot. So I'm going to click somewhere on the ring where I get this white selector and drag it outwards to increase the size of this emitter. I'm going to want it to be significantly bigger than the entire shot action. Next, because I know I'm going to want the particles to last longer than 100 frames, I'm going to increase the lifespan to take care of that for later. If you're okay with some of the snowflakes disappearing mid-shot, by increasing the lifespan we're going to keep snowflakes from randomly disappearing in the middle of the shot. This way the only way they actually disappear is if they completely leave the screen. By increasing the lifespan to the duration of the entire sequence or longer, we ensure that the snowflakes won't disappear unless they go off of the screen entirely, which is probably what we want. If you go over to the style tab of the emitter, you can choose if you want the style to be point or blob. I think either of those work pretty well for the background snowflakes. Alt alternatively, if you're okay with it being a little bit more processor intensive, you can go to brush, and then from brush we can select an option, such as one of these flakes. But unless you're going to be increasing the size of these dramatically, it's actually going to be very hard to see the shape of those background snowflakes. So you might as well just use uh, point or blob as your style here for creating the background dots. So if they're going to be small enough, you might as well just use point or blob to have lower detailed background snowflakes, but that will render much faster. So with blob, I'm going to go to the size controls for that style, and I'm going to increase the size quite a bit. You're going to want size variance so that not all the snowflakes look exactly the same. And on the controls tab, which is the left, we're going to want to increase the number and the number variance as well to add some randomness. So if we go to frame zero and hit play now, uh, you'll see that the snowflakes look quite flashy. The only reason they're moving around is because of the turbulence. So you can see how the turbulence kind of makes it go in random directions across time. But we actually want to add in some base velocity as well, which is going to be downward since it's falling from the sky, of course. So in controls, we go down to the velocity section and I'm going to add in a velocity for the background snow and velocity variance as well so that they fall at slightly random speeds. Next, in order to make sure that they're going down and not to the right, we'll need to customize the angle there. So I think what we want is 90 degrees or so, actually negative 90 degrees. So now they're going downwards instead of to the right. And we'll of course want some angle variance there. 
since it's not going to go straight down. So about 33 degrees I found works pretty well. So we can also see that the velocity is going way too fast as well. So I'm going to lower that down now, cutting it in about half as well as the velocity variance, and maybe even more so than that. So just drag it until you get a number where the snow is falling slow enough for your purposes. So actually lowering it down to about 0 0.027 seems to be about the right number for me. If you feel that the numbers are too strong on your turbulence, you can go to that effect and cut the strength values to a lower number as well. So the higher the strength is, the more turbulence you're going to get across that axis. So if you want something to shake a lot from left to right, then adding X strength would cause that to happen. So the reverse also holds true. So we can lower the turbulence by just a tad for all three axes. And let's hit play here. So that's actually looking pretty good overall. So now if we go back over to the edit tab, and disable video track 3 temporarily, uh, we'll be able to see the fusion composition layering on top of the original video. So this is what we've got so far roughly. A lot of tiny snowflakes in the background, but there's a problem that all of these snowflakes also show in front of the woman's face. So that's a problem for us because obviously there shouldn't be as much snow right up close to the camera as there should be in the background. We also need more variety in the size of the snowflakes. So let's go back and customize Fusion Track 2 a little bit more. We'll take the particle emitter, go back over to Style, and I'm going to increase the size, and I'm also going to increase the size variance on these snowflakes so that the background snow looks a little bit different. So with that, you have some really tiny, hard-to-see snowflakes, and you also have some that are a little bit bigger. But what we really need to do next is to hide these tiny background snowflakes from the woman's body. So we're going to do that on Video Track 3. So I'm going to re-enable Video Track, and we're going to go over to the color tab so that we can use a power window and track the woman's movement across the shot. And the power window will cover all of the snow that's occurring on Video Track 2. So in the color tab, we can add in this power window pretty easily. I'm going to do it with the Bezier Curve tool. So go to the Power Windows tool, it looks like the circle there, and then click on the one that looks like a pen. I'm going to get some of the extra things we don't need out of the way, and then I'm going to draw my shape. So roughly we want the outline of this fur coat. So I'm going to start right above the top here, and keep adding points for this pen tool until we get the shape of the woman's body. So just kind of go around there. It doesn't have to be exact, but if you spend more time with it, obviously, that'll make it look a little better. And once I have the shape there, I might add a little bit of softness on the outer edges. So in the softness area, some of the background effect will show through just a tad, but everything in the inner area will be hidden completely. So next, I'm going to go over to the next tab here called Tracker. And starting at the frame which we drew the shape for, for the power window, we want to track forward and track backwards. Uh, this is actually ideal if you did it at frame 0 instead, so then you only have to track forwards, but it's not a big deal. We can start from this point in the middle of our clip. But before we start tracking, I'm going to turn off 3D here, because it's unnecessary for our current purposes. And I'm going to track forward. So what you should see is that the shape follows the person. We can make some adjustments to the size afterwards. Going to right around here where the shape isn't quite large enough to cover the bottom parts as well. Uh, we can expand the size of these points and kind of drag them down as well. So to do that, I'm going to check the keyframe diamond for corrector 1 on the keyframe section. And I'm going to drag these points downwards, this one over to the left a bit, and this one down there. So that should set a keyframe in your timeline there. You can see that in the tracker. If we hit play, we'll see how the shape itself adjusts itself between those two keyframes. Now we need to do the same thing right around here. So the corrector one is still queued up for keyframe animation, so we can just slide these points down once again. And now if I scroll through the timeline in the tracker window, we can see that the shape of the power window should be sufficient to make sure that all of this part can be masked out later. So I'm going to go back to the original point which we set for the power window and track to the start now. So this is the button that looks like a backward sign, it's track reverse. So same thing but reversing the direction now. So we take that to the start, uh, looks like we'll need one keyframe in there. I'll set the keyframe just by adjusting this one a little bit. And now we'll go to frame 0 and drag these bottom points down. 
and maybe this one down a little bit as well. This one over here. And that one can be there. So I'm going to hit play one more time and make sure that the power window does a good job of selecting this region where the woman is moving at all points in time. And that's looking pretty good so far. So next I'm going to open up the node section so that I can see the corrector node. So in this little corrector node, what you're actually seeing is the video information after all of this color tab correction has gone through. You can see that the parts of the background have basically been filtered out. And what's going to go through is only the person's body and the fur coat. But in order to make sure that the alpha information goes through in the final shot, we need to right click and add an alpha output node and connect the alpha channel from this corrector node to the output. When we do that, you should see the snow effect from video layer 2 comes back in immediately. But now you only see it in the areas where video track 3 has a transparent background due to the keying of the power window. You can see that back on the edit tab. We will fit the video to the screen and hit play. And across time, um, the person's body moves, but the snow stays in the background. And that is exactly what we want. And now to complete the effect, we need a foreground snow layer. So to make things quicker in generating that foreground snow layer, I'm going to copy the fusion composition from Video Track 2. And we're just going to put that on top of video track 4. So now our video has four layers, the original video clip, the background snow, the foreground selection of the woman's body, and then the final foreground snow, which we'll create right now. So going over to the color tab, click on clips and make sure that we're now working on video track 4. So you'll see the V4. I'm going to take the particle emitter here. And I'm going to go over to the Style tab, and we're going to change the style now from Blob to Brush. So this time we are going to use one of the flake brushes. Uh, you can find one of these flakes, there are many flakes, and just choose the one you like. You can always zoom in to see what those flakes look like. And we're going to also increase the size of these snowflakes. So I want them to be quite visible on the camera. So something like 0 0.35 with a high size variance as well. And if I scroll through the first few frames, something you'll notice is that it actually takes a second to start snowing. So one setting we're going to change on both snow layers is actually on particle vendor. We want to pre-generate some of the frames. So I'm going to take this to something like 25 frames. And that means the effect is basically going to start at frame 23 instead of frame 0. So by doing that, a lot of the snow will already exist before the shot actually starts taking place. We're also going to want to turn down the number of snowflakes dramatically. Uh, there should be more snow in the background than there should be in the foreground. So I'm going to go to emitter and take the number way down. Also the number variance way down. Probably much more significantly. So something like 1, 2, or 3 for the number. And then something a little less than that for the number variance. So we can kind of hit play and see roughly how that would look. Note that these full brush snowflakes take a lot more GPU in order to render, as you can see. And honestly, that's still too many snowflakes, so I'm going to take the number even lower, somewhere below 1, with a number variance of about 0 0.2. And if I go take a look at some of these frames, it's looking a little better. Um, let's make it 0 0.6 for the number and 0 0.2 for the number variance. Before I forget, let's go back to Video Track 2. So Clips Video Track 2, and let's add pre-generate frames for that renderer as well. So something like 20, 23 frames. Okay, and back to Video Track 4. We're going to want to take the velocity here and increase it for the foreground snowflakes so that they go past the screen faster than the background snowflakes. So let's increase the velocity here and the velocity variance by a bit. And if we go take a look at the edit tab and play it back, it should start to come together by this point. So we can see that we have the foreground snowflakes, which are a bit large at the moment, and we have the background snowflakes as well. The foreground snowflakes show everywhere, but the background snowflakes only show in the background. So just to do a little bit of cleanup before we call it good here, I think that the foreground snowflake should have a little bit extra uh, size variance. So let's go ahead and change that once more on the Fusion tab. 
So, video track for selected particle emitter, and I'm going to go to the style tab and increase the size variance here, well, possibly slightly lowering down the base size. So let's go with a size of around 0.2 and a size variance of around 0.3. Now back on the edit tab, one more thing we could add would be some blur to the foreground snowflakes. So something really minor like a 1.0 should be okay there. Okay, so as one final touch for this, I would argue that the snowflakes are way too vivid in the shot. So one way we can have it blend together a little bit better with the underlying layers is to change its composite mode in the edit tab. So for video track four, I'm gonna take the composite mode from normal and I'm gonna shift that to either luminosity or overlay. So with luminosity, it'll blend together something like this and overlay will be something a little bit more like that. And I like with the overlay composite mode that you can actually see through a little bit of the background. Some of the color shows through as well. And I think that gives it a little bit more of a realistic feel. Okay, so just a few more things for cleanup. I'm going to also decrease the number of snowflakes in the background, but maybe increase their size a little bit. So back on Fusion Color Tab 2, let's increase the size, the size variance. But on Control, let's decrease the number and the number of variants. And at the end for this shot, you can see that it fades to white. So at that point, I think I also want to fade out all the snow effects. So starting at roughly the frame where the original clip fades to white, I'm going to pull out the white tab on the video track for both video track 2 and 4. So if you do that and hit play, the snow should fade out as the screen fades to white. So if we do that and go ahead and hit play after it pre-renders, uh, we should be able to see that the snowflakes fade out along with the shot. So that gives us our final result. Hopefully you guys think it looks pretty good. We could go a step further and add in some directional forces and things like that if we wanted to make things just a tad more realistic. But that's pretty much the idea of how you generate a snow effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So I've been Chris. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the future video content.